In this presentation we're going to do some numerical processing and we're going to calculate the rate of an enzyme catalyzed reaction. So by the end of this presentation we're going to be able to calculate the rate of enzyme ac activity from some experimental data. So we're going to have a look at the experiment um, as well as thinking about what we mean by rate of reaction. Let's begin by thinking what we mean by rate, rate of reaction. Perhaps we could think about a 100 meter race. So in this 100 meter race, our top sprinter here, let's say, completes 100 meters in 10 seconds flat. Okay, so he's covered a distance of 100 meters in 10 seconds. What is the sprinter's rate? Of course here I'm talking about the, sprinter, the sprinter's speed. So speed equals the distance divided by the time. So we've got a distance of 100 meters and a time of 10 seconds. So 100 divided by 10 is 10. So the sprinter is moving at a rate of 10 meters per second. And this is what we mean when we talk about rates of reaction. So let's have a look at some experimental data. You'll be familiar with this because we carried out this experiment um, when we were looking at the digestion of starch with salivary amylase. So let's just say we're doing an experiment here and our water bath is at 30 degrees Celsius. So I want to find out how the enzyme amylase, how does that work? How does that, um, how active is that at 30 degrees Celsius? I've got my starch in the boiling tube here. And let's say I've got 100 grams of starch. So I've made up a solution of 100 grams of starch and I've mixed it with my amylase and I'm keeping it at 30 degrees Celsius. Well, I'm going to use my spotting tile and um, every, every couple of minutes I'm measuring to see whether the starch is present and let's say that the starch is all digested at 14 minutes. So there's the starch all digested. So the experiment is showing us that at 30 degrees Celsius, 100 grams of starch is digested. So it's 100 grams divided by 14 minutes equals 7.14. So, 7.14 grams of starch are digested every minute. That's my rate of reaction. Okay, let's have a look at another example. So this is some student data. And they've carried out this experiment at 0 degrees, 10 degrees, 20, 30. 40, 50 and 60 degrees so I'd expect to see a data point at each one of those temperatures. So this graph was created by carrying out a whole series of experiments. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven experiments to plot this data. So the student would have originally had a results table and that result, results table would have gone into producing that particular curve. So my challenge for you is calculate the rate of reaction at 30 degrees Celsius based on the information in that table. Give that a go and I'll show you the answer in a moment. Press pause. So let's work this out. At 30 degrees Celsius it takes how long? Well, we're going up 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So at 30, 2, 4, that looks 5. So at 30 degrees it takes time 5 minutes. So at 30 degrees it takes 5 minutes for 100 grams of starch to be digested. If we use our calculator, um, 100 grams divided by 5 equals 20. So the rate of reaction is 20 grams per minute, and there's your answer. So 
what you can see on this slide is a whole set of results with the rates of reaction calculated. So we've just done this one. We've just looked at what the rate of reaction is at 30 degrees Celsius. And you could do the same for each one. So now what we're able to do is draw a graph of rate of reaction against temperature rather than time taken against temperature. So in this slide I've used Excel to plot the graph and the x-axis I've got temperature in degrees Celsius and the y-axis which I haven't quite labelled I have now there's my y-axis, there's the rate of reaction. So I can see how this enzyme behaves at different temperatures. And I can identify the optimum temperature. And even at 60 degrees Celsius, I haven't quite got down to zero reactivity. The enzyme's still working at 60 degrees Celsius here. So in summary, in this presentation I've shown you how to calculate the rate of a reaction using some experimental data. I've also shown you how that can be plotted on a graph as well.